In this video, we're going to look at the new features in Onyx 21. We'll explain how to use them and talk about how they may benefit you in your workflow. The first new feature we're going to look at is print label improvements that are included with Onyx 21. I've opened one of our sample files into Job Editor here so that I can show you the controls in Job Editor. If we click on the Finishing tab and on Marks, we can find our print label control section. We're going to enable the print label. And the first thing I want you to take notice of is this rotate label 180 degrees. This checkbox will take the print label and flip it 180 degrees to print upside down. This is useful in situations where you're printing a job and you'd like to have the label included as a part of that job in case it wraps behind, such as a canvas wrap or a banner. If we go into the setup section, inside of the print label setup options, I want you to take note of these two new items. The first is image. What this control allows you to do is add an image as a part of your print label. You can see that there's a checkbox to include an image in the label. You can select whether you would have it left justified or right justified. And then also you can browse to the image you'd like to include as a part of your print label. I'm going to do this. and I'm going to add a logo into my print label. You can now see that that image is going to be printed as a part of my print label. The next feature that we've added for print labels is QR code generation. If you check the box to enable the QR code, you can select which items from the job you would like to include as part of the QR code. I'm going to enable all of these, and that way we'll get all of the information from this job as a part of that QR code. Of course, you can always come in and deselect the ones that don't pertain to the information you need as a part of that QR code. And this information comes from the information that's included as part of the job to begin with. Now that we're done, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to submit the job into RIPQ. Once the job has completed ripping, I'm going to do a spot check and I can see here that the gray bar is denoting that my label is going to print with the information in it. So I'm going to go ahead and send that job to print. Normally you'd be able to go to the printer and inspect the label to make sure it matches what you configured. In this situation, I've set my printer to output a TIFF file and I've opened that TIFF file. You can see my Onyx logo here that I specified as the label image has been included in the print label. And then also I have my QR code that I configured as part of the print label as well. Next, I'm going to show you how to configure these same print label options as part of a quick set for automation. Back in RIPQ, we're going to select our printer and we're going to go to Edit Quick Sets. We'll select the quick set we want to use. For this one, I'm using just the default. We select Edit, which will open the Edit Quick Set dialog options. For the print label information, we want to go into Advanced. And then we're going to go down to Marks. And you can see the print label configuration just like it was in Job Editor. Of course, we have the rotate label 180 degrees. So that can be done through a quick set. And for the other options, we're going to just go to Enable. Then we're going to come into Setup. And you can see our interface here matches Job Editor exactly the same. So if we look at Image, I can enable it. I can select whether it's right or left justified. And I can select the image that I would like to be included in the print label for all jobs that are open with this quick set. Same goes for QR code. If I select QR code and I enable, I have the same options as in Job Editor where I can enable and disable the information I would like to be included in a QR code for every job that's open with this quick set. And that's how you would enable a quick set to use the new print label features in Onyx 21. Now that we're back in RIPQ, the next Onyx 21 feature that we're going to take a look at is the ability to generate PDF tile maps. PDF tile maps can be generated by Quick Set for Automation, they can be done manually on a per job basis in Job Editor, or they can be done in RIPQ before or after a print has been completed. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up one of our sample files, and I've got it set to open in Job Editor, and we'll look at how tiling maps work in Job Editor to begin with. With my job open in Job Editor, I want to navigate to the Tiling tab, and I want to enable Tiling. At this point, you would set up the tiling as needed for your job. 
but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to come in here and add a couple of tiles. Next you'll notice there's a new tab here, Tile Map. I'm going to click on that, and you'll see the options for the Tile Map generation. The first one, Generate Tile Map at Rip Time. Enabling this will generate the tile map automatically once the job is done ripping in Rip Queue. Next is the folder. You can open this to select the location you'd like the tile map to be stored in. We have a new default location in the Onyx directory of tile maps. I'm going to leave that. Next, we have the ability to add a page for each tile. I'm going to select that. This means that each tile will be represented on its own page individually in addition to the tile map. We have a page size selection. We have orientation. Some tile jobs will work better in portrait and others in landscape. Mostly has to do with what size and, and what orientation your tiles are. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to select landscape. And then lastly, we have the generate tile map button. If you select this, you can create a tile map in job editor while you're setting the job up. You can see that it's got the job name and it's adding tile map at the end and it's a PDF and it's in our default tile map folder. So I'm going to click save, which will generate our tile map. And then I'm going to browse to that location and open that tile map. You can see here that I've now opened that PDF tile map and my job is here, the name, overall size, number of tiles, and my overlap. I didn't configure any overlap on this particular job. If there were any, it would be listed here. You can see I've got all of my tiles in the tile map here, organized just the way they were set up in Job Editor. If I scroll down, you can see I've got all of my tiles here, just the way I set it up in Job Editor. If I scroll down, the next page is a tile list that tells me each of the tiles, the row, the column, and the size. And because I selected to have each tile on a separate page, I can now go down and see each tile individually in a larger image. One really nice feature is if I click on the job name, it's going to return me back to the top of my tile map. Additionally, if I'd like to go straight to a tile, I can navigate to it in the tile map, and I can click on that tile and it will take me there. Now that your tile map's completed, you can email this or print it out and include it for an installer to take with them on the job. Next, I'm going to head back into RipQ, and we'll look at how to do tile maps as part of a quick set for automation. Now that we're back in RipQ, we're going to go back into Edit Quick Sets. We're going to select the quick set we want to add the PDF tile map feature to. I've got the default selected here, and I'm going to select Edit. Inside the Edit Quick Sets dialog, I'm going to go to Advanced. And the first thing I'm going to do is come to the Tile Setup section. You'll notice that tiling is not enabled. If you were to go to Tile Map, you'll see all of the controls are grayed out. And you've got a note saying the Tile Map Setup cannot be configured until tiling has been enabled in Tile Setup. So we're going to go back to Tile Setup. And we're going to enable tiling. Same as in Job Editor, this is the point where you would want to configure your tiling options. Of course, because this is a quick set, any job that's opened or ripped with this quick set is going to have these tiling options applied to them. Next, we're going to go back to the tile map, and you'll see that the controls are the same as they were in Job Editor. For the quick set purposes, the most important one is that you do want to turn on the Generate Tile Map at rip time. And the folder can be designated again, just like we talked about in Job Editor. We have the option to add pages for each tile, which can be enabled or disabled. And then we have our page size and our orientation. And that covers how to enable tile maps as part of a quick set for automation. The last portion is we're going to take a look at how to generate tile maps inside of RipQ for a tile job that may have been printed already or is yet to be printed. Back in RipQ, I've got a couple of jobs that I've already set up here. One of them is a tile job that's waiting to be printed. You can see my tile lines here. And then the other one is a tile job that's already been printed. With the new PDF tile map feature, you can generate a tile map for either job. It's as easy as going to the job, right clicking on it, and selecting the option for generate tile map. As with the other options in Job Editor and the Quick Set, you'll be presented with the tile map options. 
add a page for each tile, page size, and orientation. And then you would click Generate Tile Map. So let's generate a tile map for a job that was already printed. Right click the job, select Generate Tile Map. We have our options. I'm going to select Add Pages for each tile. And as before, I'm going to select Landscape. When I click Generate Tile Map, it's going to bring up the location. You can see our previous tile maps in our Tile Maps folder. We're going to generate a new one with the job name underscore tile map by default. I click Save. I get the notification that it was done successfully. I click OK. And I can now browse to that folder and open up that tile map. Here's our new tile map with our tiling designation. You can see our overall size, number of tiles, and I can click on each tile that I'd like to browse to individually. The final item we're going to look at in this Onyx 21 video is Swatchbooks 2.0. We've added a couple of new workflows, which includes the ability to print and scan swatches with a spectrophotometer. So let's jump into Swatchbooks. First thing we're going to do is make sure all of our settings are configured correctly for the media profile and print mode that we want to perform a swatch book section for. I'm going to select a spot color here. This is the point where you would want to select the color that's giving you the problem that you're trying to solve by getting a closer match in swatch books. Once I have everything configured, I'm going to click OK. It'll bring me into the default swatch books dialog. You can see there's a couple new things here. We've added the starting color section, which always keeps the color that you selected at the beginning of the swatch book section. We also have a new source color section. We also have a new selected color section. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to print our swatches just like before. But in Onyx 21, we now have two buttons here. One is for print measurement swatch. That would be the workflow for using spectrophotometer that we'll cover later. And there's the print visual swatch button which allows us to print out the swatches and inspect them visually and select the one that's the closest match. So we're going to print a visual swatch. Click print. And it lets me know that the job's been sent to RIPQ. I'm going to bounce over to RIPQ. I'll select the job. And I'm going to print it. Once the job is completed printing, you would take it off the printer and you would compare it to the color that you're trying to match through swatch books. Once I've made the comparison and I found the color that's the closest match, I'm going to come back into Swatch Books. And the new feature that we've added in Onyx 21 is you can come in here in Swatch Books and you can select the swatch that matches the color that's the closest match for you. So let's say it's this color here. I'm going to hover over it. You can see it's identifying that. And I'm going to click it. Once I do so, you can see that now becomes my selected color. And I have a couple of new options that I can do with that selected color. The first one is I can set this as the source. What that will do is it will take these device values and it will place them as my new source color. And that will automatically generate a new swatch set based on my criteria over here, which allows me to print an iteration. This is the workflow you would use if the color that you selected is the closest out of these colors, but it's not quite close enough. You can select that close color and you can set it as the source which will give you the new swatch set, which allows you to iterate and continue to improve how close you are to matching that actual color. So now that I've selected a new color, you can see the second button is Add to Print Mode. This button allows you to complete your swatch book selection by adding that color as a print mode defined color from within swatch books. Once I click this button, it's going to bring up the dialog to add a print mode color. It'll give you a chance to put in a name and if you'd like a comment. And of course all of our settings are being carried over from our Swatchbook session and it has our device values in here. I'm going to leave all the defaults and click OK. That means that the next time a job is ripped with that print mode, the software will automatically replace that print mode color with the defined colors from this Swatchbook session. That covers the changes for the visual workflow. Next we're going to take a look at doing a printed Swatchbooks job with a spectrophotometer. To begin a printed swatch book session, we're going to do the exact same workflow as before. We'll click on swatch books. When the dialog opens, you'll select all the criteria for the color. I'm going to select spot color again. 
And in this case, I'm going to pick Pantone 185C as the color that I'm trying to get the match for. I'm going to click OK. It's going to auto-generate some patches for me. This time, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select Print Measurement Swatch. When I do, it's going to bring up the Print Measurement Swatch option. The first thing you'll notice is the Print button is grayed out. You'll first need to add a color device before you can print your swatches. And of course, in this step, you'll be adding the color device that you have. After adding a color device, the print button is now available, and I'll click print. Same as before, it's going to submit my swatches to the queue. But this time, you'll notice in RIP queue, my swatches look a little bit different. They match the swatch pattern for the color device that I'm going to be measuring that swatch with. I'm going to print that job. Once the job is completed printing, it'll change from printing to waiting to measure. At this point, you'll let the swatches dry, you'll remove them from the printer, and you'll get them ready to scan with your spectrophotometer. In Onyx, to measure the swatches, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Measure Swatch. After you've completed measurements with your spectrophotometer, you can click OK to accept the readings. And it will come up with a report that will give you a delta E value along with the device values for each of the swatches. At this point, you have a couple different options. First being you can generate the report, which will create an HTML page that you can view all of the information for this swatch book job. This is dynamic, so it's sortable. You can sort based on which is the worst and which is the best as far as delta E is concerned. You can see the patch ID, the target, measured, and device values. Also from within this dialog, you can view the measurements, or you can add a color to a print mode. If you were to select a swatch that has the lowest delta E value here, you can click the button to add to print mode, it's going to have the spot color name that we started with. You can add a comment, has the printer information, and it has the device values. Clicking OK will let you know that that color has been added to the print mode and will now perform a replacement when this color is in a job that's printed with this print mode. The other option here is that you have swatch books. If you've scanned all of your swatches and your delta E values are not what you would like, you can perform an iteration by selecting swatch books, which will bring up a new swatch book session has our original starting color, as our source color, and we can now iterate by creating a new swatch set with different values. Come in here, you can change the criteria by which the swatches are generated if need be, and get a whole new set of swatches that you can then print again with the measurement swatch. That will get submitted to the queue where you can print and scan as many times as needed to achieve the delta E rating for that particular swatch that you're looking for. And that covers the new scanning workflow in Swatchbooks 2.0 with Onyx 21.